You know who it is, the whore flick, digger ditch, super six, big Mitch. And I'm kicking in doors with all three O's. And I'm bringing 28 one-on-ones because we Vegas sons. It's the Meadowlands. It's the Meadows, man. Hubba dub. You already know what I'm finna do, right, scrub? Boom! You know I'm on them things, man. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. You know what I mean? Welcome to Vegas Chronicles, man, with your man, Whore Flick. Dig a ditch, Big Mitch. And today, like any other day, man, we go kick actual factuals. Uh, I was asked a couple questions. Um, Number one. I'm gonna get to. I'm gonna do a video about uh, prison boring gangsters or whatever. Uh, a guy asked me a question about that, and shout out to him. You know that asked me that question uh, about guys that go to the penitentiary and start claiming gangs. And Lord knows we got a lot of that out here. We got a lot of that. So to do a video on that, I probably have to do a two-part series because there's so much of that going on up in the penitentiary. You got dudes that's you know. You can listen, and I'm going to keep it so 100 with you. And it ain't just in, 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 in the Gershon. It's in a lot of hoods, you know. But what, one, one of the things that made the Gershon, you know, so deep in prison, they were going to, the Gershon is a, the biggest gang, you know, was the biggest gang uh, uh, in Vegas anyway. But what made them even more bigger in the prison system was the fact that the Gershon, recruited dudes who they know wasn't really from the Gerson. They recruited dudes, hell, that wasn't even from Vegas. Shorty Paul, Sportio, 32 from Kansas City, you know, Tony Tones from New York. I mean, let's just keep it real. It ain't no secret. Everybody knew a bunch of dudes that was claiming Gerson in the prison system. Never seen the Gerson one day in their life. And had the audacity to call themselves OGs. For real. That went on a lot. And it caused a lot of conflict because, you know, a lot of people that was from the Gerson, like, I mean, it was incidents like between Google and Rule Barron. Google used to always tell Rube Barron, you ain't from the girls, whoop, whoop, whoop. And Rube Barron was like, go on, get out of my face with that, Google. And, you know, they used to go back and forth with that, you know. And it's the same thing with, you know, um, you know, uh, well, I used to be with Bankroll, me, Bankroll, Bob, uh, Easy Money, Rest in Peace, and Leetry. We used to be a crew in Unit 6 in Indian Springs. And Bankroll used to always get into it with P.B. Dickey. And one of the first things Dickie used to always tell Bankroll is he ain't no blood. He ain't no PB. And that's when Dickie and Easy Money would get into it, with, get into it, you know. And, you know, Easy Money used to always, you know, Dickie knew not to play with Easy Money. Because Easy Money, was so, she was surgical with a blade. And he will put that blade on you. And Dickie knew that. So when it came to Easy, Dickie kind of like, he, he, he got back. But he used to, that's the first thing he used to do. Now, the reason why Dickie used to do that is because a lot of people uh, go to prison knowing they're gang, they not gang-affiliated or never was, you know. But because, you know, they be having it in the joint, you know. You know, they be having their way. They be doing their thing. They need protection, per se. So they'll get with whoever. If they feel closer with the Bloods, you know, if they feel closer with the Crips, whatever, they'll find a click to get with and they'll protect them. And it ain't because they know, you know, this the new homie. It's because they know they, they got what they want. And as long as you keep bringing that in, you can be our friend type stuff. So a lot of gangs got members off that alone that was looking for protection, you know. But... When I come to the joint, I realized off top, it was just popular to be a Gershon back in the days. Because it was so many dudes that I knew for a fact that wasn't from nowhere in the vicinity. They wasn't from nowhere from 89106 or 030 that was claiming Gershon. Sportio from New Orleans. And y'all know Al from New Orleans. 
Y'all know that. Y'all know 32 from Kansas City. Tony Tone from New York. And look at what Tony Tone do when he get out. See, that caused a lot of friction because a lot of them dudes were just claiming Gershon for protection. And as soon as they got out of prison, they got to be themselves and didn't give a damn about the Gershon. It's some dudes that they went to that was up in Reno. Ain't no need to say no names because they know who they are. That was up in Reno at college. Committed a murder. Right? Long time ago. Committed a murder. Came in a prison system through, NS, through NSP and NNCC. Because NNCC is what a fish tank for uh, northern Nevada is. That's what a fish tank at, at, at NNCC. So they come in through there. Right? A long time ago. Get with a crew, maybe the GQs or something. Start claiming that, right? The GQs of Donna Street start coming in the prison system later on. Never seen this cat before in their life. But all of a sudden, he OG. It's a bunch of people that ran into resistance, though. Because it's a bunch of dudes that came to the joint that knew that this, this dude ain't from where I'm from. Man, hell no, that ain't my big homie. It's a bunch of dudes that had that problem. That dudes didn't want to follow. That dudes didn't want nothing to do with. I was one of the dudes that thumb my nose that people like Shorty Paul. I ain't want nothing to do with Shorty Paul. I knew he wasn't from Shorty Paul from Chicago. I don't know what he did out there. I don't know this dude. But he get up on the you know, Gershons that was there in prison before me, old heads, and then they accepted him. Because like I said, it seemed like being a Gerson back in the days was just, a, you know, a trend. It messed me up when I seen Big Al claiming Gerson. Big Al and Raymond Williams, y'all remember them? We know they come out of California. But when I seen Al throwing up K's and pushing, the, pushing Gerson, after what he went through in the Gerson. Messed me up. Messed me up. But it's dudes that go to prison, man. I swear to God. It's dudes that ain't never been in the game. Ain't never been in the game. Or go to prison. And get tatted up in prison. Get some muscles. Have a few fights. Win some, maybe stab a person or two here and there, get a name up in there, and swear they OG, but ain't never in their life drunk a 40, spray painted on the wall, been to the boys club, or did nothing in the set he claimed. A lot of that go on. People can pretend like they don't, but a lot of that go on. Let me tell you something, Vegas Chronicles. I'm in hot desert, right? I didn't even want to get into this, but I got to now. Hey, look, I was in hot desert, right? They throw a meeting. It's at night, though. Right? Big old meeting. It's a thousand persons on this yard, right? So when we get down there by the bleachers, in front of Unit 3, where the phones used to be. Y'all know where the phones used to be down there by Unit 3, where the basketball court is. Those bleachers right there. We was down there. This one, Hot Desert, was wide open before the ride with the Mexicans. We had a we had a, a, a meeting down there. Thousand nurses come, right? So, once the meeting gets started, j Lo, rest in peace, he said, Hey, hold on, man. Hold on. Hold up, man. Hold up. Who is that? So we like, who? We turn around. We see this white cat, right? He got a beanie on. Like, who the hell is that? Right?
right? So everybody like, hey, who was that? So Cornbread got a nephew named Wet, right? He down there. Y'all know Wet, Bread nephew. Used to be a love lock. Y'all know Wet. So Wet gonna say, he with me. Like, like, like he's some type of huncho or something. Like, okay, he with you, so we just gonna leave it at that. So we like, nah, who is that? He gonna say, he with me. We was like, so who was him? You and him need to get, you better get him away from here. So, you know, as people got to looking, they knew who this cat was. Frog, they knew who he was. Frog get to laughing. So I'm like, what, what, what's going on? Frog said, that's Sharky. Sharky? Who the hell is Sharky? Sharky, Sharky, Sharky. This boy done bought a full-fledged shenanay, put it that way, to the meat. A white shenanay to the meat. Sharky. This Robert England, Freddy Krueger looking, he didn't bought this dude to the meeting, man. For real. And some of them dudes, I ain't, man, some of them dudes had the homosexuals claiming Gerson. I'm keeping it real. That's what messed everything up. You know, and that's like that in a, a bunch of some dudes, and you know, like the NTGs, the 60s, you know, you know the, 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 the hood and stuff like that. See, the hood, neighborhood like that, and, I ain't, and, and a bunch of them, they didn't allow that. And when their homies got out of line, it was, and, and, and they checked their homies. I didn't, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't witness a bunch of dudes get smashed behind disrespecting their cop like that because they felt like if you go partake in that, take yourself somewhere where we don't know about it. But some neighborhoods allow that because they big homies made it seem like it was cool to do. And that be them dudes that be coming. There'll be all of them, but it be a lot of dudes that be from out of state, coming from here, coming from there, and they want to claim Gerson and all that there, and they like boys. Let's just keep it real. A lot of dudes was allowed to, to claim Gerson. There was some rotten MFs. For real, man. <clears throat> Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. You know, but another question I was asked, because I'm, I'm gonna do a video on that prison boy. I just got I just got carried away. I'm sorry, y'all. But cause they make me sick, man. They know they're not from they know they're not from where you're from, man. I don't like that, man. You know, how you do I wish you would. That's why I was always considered a, a rogue or whatever you want to consider me. I was a warrior. You're not finna sit here and tell me that this dude here is my big homeboy when I know goddamn well my father is all y'all big homeboys. So you ain't finna sit here and tell me that this cat here is my big homeboy and I know this cat ain't no from nowhere near nowhere near nowhere near nowhere near. For real. Shorty Paul, dude. You know what ended up happening to Shorty Paul? Shorty Paul was on some police stuff up in uh, Hot Desert. Watching everybody. Stuff he known for doing. Hanging out there in front of the, 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 the laundry room. In everybody business. All he did was just rah, 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 rah. Talk about everybody else. And big nose ass sit up there snort a pound of hair really. Like it ain't nothing. But he rah, 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 rah about everybody else. People got tired of that, man. Him watching people and doing that. So them, so them, so the North... They got at him. They came, they got when he came off visit. They thought he had something. They went in his room. They smashed him. They stuck their hand up in him, looking for whatever he's supposed to have. Broke his spleen, all that. And this the cold part about it. 
This the cold part about it. It was Gershon's that watched it happen. <laughs> watched it happen. Was on the telephone as it was going down. Watched it happen. Yeah. Watched it happen. And it's deeper than that, but I'm going to leave it right there. But it's deeper than that, huh? Because how they cracked that case, how they know how they know the North did it? Who told them? Y'all don't want me to talk about that, huh? Yeah, you don't want me to talk about that, huh? Yeah, I'm going to leave it right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to leave it right there. You don't want me to talk about that. How they know the North did it? Uh, who, who, who told Nevins that the North did it? Hmm? Who got sent to NNCC and got that job in the kitchen and in the laundry room? Nice job in the laundry room. And it's hard to get a job like that at NNCC. Huh? We ain't gonna talk about that, though. We gonna move on. We gonna move on. Somebody asked me, uh, is it harder in prison than it is on the street? That's a good question. And to that, I'm gonna say, it's harder in prison in some aspects. I'm gonna show you why. And if you ain't never been to prison, you can't even speak on this. But I'm going to tell you something about prison. One of the first things prisons do, do is it, 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 it expose a lot of people. See, a lot of people on the street, they can go get their gun. A lot of y'all live by this because you can't do this. A lot of you live by this. Mm -hmm. And when you go to prison and they take that from you and you got to use this right here. And this dude's up there that's been fighting all their lives. And you got to see them. You know how many dudes that, like for instance, it's some, like, it's dudes out here that shoot, right? It's cats out here that don't like guns, that would rather fight you. They just don't like guns. Some dudes are scared of guns. They're real scared of guns. Some vicious dudes, they scared of guns, but they, they, they tie you up from here. So they'd rather do this here and just beat you up. They don't want no, they don't want to play with guns. But there's some dudes out here that like guns and don't want to fight. So out here, the guy, the guy with the gun, he got the advantage because the dude that don't like guns don't want nothing to do with him because he don't want to get shot. But when that dude go to the prison system and run into that same dude that don't like them guns, that want to fight, now you got to face him on a, a, a level playing field. You know how many people that can did something to Big E Dub from West Coast Bloods? That he didn't he didn't caught up with in that joint because they went to some gunplay with him and now they had to fight him. You know how many dudes he knocked out. See, when you all about this here and you go to prison and you got to fight, it tells you what type of man you is. Now there's some dudes that do this here and fight. But it's a whole bunch of them that get up there and they pray to God their homies come take that faith for them and they be on some, please just come save a B-I-T-C-H. It's a whole bunch of dudes. I just seen dudes literally run behind their homeboys because a dude wanted that faith for whatever they did happen on the street. I just seen dudes run. Why you tripping? Why you tripping? But you was ferocious on the street with that pistol. But now, dude, he just want to fight you. But you running behind your homeboy. That didn't happen a lot. Prison is harder. See? You know how many dudes that did PC it up that would rather live on PC than fight? See, this is what they don't want to tell you. But y'all can get out here. You can get on social media. Because you got your gun and all that stuff. You super tough. And you quickly say, I ain't doing no fighting. Because you can't fight. That's been displayed in prison a lot. How many times them white, boy, them, them, them white cats, 
you know, that's what sparked that riot when I was last in prison. It's because my celly, who was from Donna, went in a room. Yeah, he was from Donna. See, I don't bang no more. That tell you I don't bang. I had a celly that was from Donna. Droop. So you know I don't gang bang. But anyway, Droop got down with that white boy. That white boy, that, see, Droop them jumped that white boy in the county jail. They jumped him. That white boy called Droop when he came. Remember, me and Droop were cellies in Unit 6 in Indian Springs. That white boy wanted to head up fade. They let Droop go in the room with that white boy. That white boy didn't been in prison. He went on methamphetamine no more. He didn't been eating three square meals a day. He didn't got chunky. He got his weight up. You know what I'm saying? Now Droop got to fight him by himself. Droop skinny. Droop went in the room and it wasn't going Droop way. Not at all. He set the civil rights movement back about 40 years. Not that ass whooping that white boy gave him. Sorry, Droop, but I just got, I got to keep it real. I'm sorry. I got to keep it real. That white boy gave your ass whooping that set the civil rights movement back about 40 years. For real. And, and Diesel from Vegas Hikes came and he looked in the window and he didn't like it. And he was like, ain't no head ups. No, cuz, ain't no head ups. And when and when the, when the, when the uh, a fight was over and the boy came out, that's when they smashed the boy. And that's when that big ride broke out in the hallway. When Devil K was swinging a mop. Right, you swinging a mop like Barry Bonds. You come down the hallway, Double K, swinging a mop like Barry Bonds. Right, he got the dust mop swinging. Right, I went in my room. I'm back on parole violation, and it's gonna stay a parole violation. I ain't even finna, man. I wish, but, but look here, I shut my door. Man, I'm not getting into nothing. I'm trying. I'm, I did 20 years. I didn't been here and done that. Boy, I wish I would. Man, I'm going to my room. Straight up, went in my room. And and, 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 and and this is why. Because, like I say, Double K, you was swinging that broom, wasn't you? You was working it too, boy. You was hitting home runs. For real, you hit about four home runs. But when they stumped that white boy in the corner, he got to shaking. Remember, he was shaking. He was convulsing real bad. And and, and, and then what you start doing? Get that man some help. Get that man some help. When it looked like he wasn't going to make it. You get that man some help. You were screaming it like Teddy Pettigraff down the hallway. Get that man some help. Hurry up. Keep it real. But that's neither here nor there. You know, um, prison will expose you. For real. So in some aspects, prison is way harder than the streets. Because it, out here on the streets, you don't deal with Hispanics, you know, like that. You don't. They're not hostile out here like that. You go in that prison system, you're going to see another side that you've never seen before. And when they come at you, for real, when they come at you, when you find yourself, when it's only 13 of y'all and it's 40 of them and they get at you, and you run, you go see what type of person is. How you running in prison? Where you go go? But Lord, we know people run, huh? You go see what type of person you is. But so in some in some aspects, prison is way harder than the streets. Because you can go move way out there in Sumbling to get away from it all. See, you can go move way out there in Henderson. You can go move way out somewhere. You know what I'm saying? By South Point, you can move way out, see? In prison, where you go, go? Just to another prison. See? And there's dudes up there that'll try you. For real. There's dudes up there that'll, that'll call your bluff, see? You don't got your pistol out there. See, you had your pistol, see? There's dudes that don't like guns. They like to, they like to do this here. And they'll, and they'll, they'll call your bluff. See, and so many dudes that used to do this here, I didn't see them get mangled. I didn't see hangers get stuck up in them. Hangers. That's why they took the wire hangers. Because they were sticking them up people, trying to look and see if they had dope. Am I lying, y'all? Keep it real. Prison is way harder than these streets. 
Yeah. Way harder than these streets. See, in prison, you got to walk that yard. Out here, come on, man. You can stay in the house. Prison, you got to walk the child. <laughs> yeah. You got to walk that yard. In here, out here, you can order takeout. You can order takeout too in prison. You can order takeout in prison. It's called PC. And that's why a lot of you people that do this go to PC. Because you didn't want that fade. But out here, I don't do no fighting. I don't do no fighting. Yeah. Yeah, we know. And in prison, you go right to PC. So prison in that aspect is harder than out here. And plus, you know, out here, you got to, you know, pay rent. You got to you got to pay for food. You got to pay for clothes. You got to pay child support. You know, you got to pay fines. You got all kinds of stuff to pay. In prison, they feed you three times a day. They go always have a room for you where the light go always work. Yeah, they gonna give you. A, they gonna you. Have, you ain't gonna have to pay no power bill. You ain't gonna have to pay no water bill. You ain't gonna have to pay none of that. They gonna give you two pair of drawers, two pair of socks, two shirts, two pair of pants, two state shirts, a pair of pregnant shoes called Bob Barkers or coasters. They gonna give you um, two towels and two pillowcases and a woolly blanket. You get all that for free. Mm -hmm. And they feed you three times a day. 